Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. I'm super happy to be back and kind of sharing some information with you guys. I am coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. Somewhere I never thought that I would be, but we're traveling for work right now and it's super exciting to be going to different locations. We've been here for a little over a week and I can say it's a huge culture shock. Really more of a climate shock. I'm used to cold Pacific Northwest weather, so this 100 degree weather is really, really a painful slow death. So I am finding ways to keep myself busy in the hotel room where it is cold. Anyway, sore spots. We hate them. I know they're super uncomfortable. They are the bane of people's existence and nobody likes to have to make an appointment to go to the dentist. So if you're not gonna avoid a warranty and you're comfortable doing home adjustments, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it at home, how to find them, how to take care of them at home. So dentures. Most of them are acrylic. If you have an ultra denture, you do not want to use anything like a Dremel or an electric sander on your dentures. They are way too, just the, the material that they're made of is really strong, but it you can do the same thing with sandpaper on an, like, on an ultra denture. So you just want to be careful. So you have an acrylic denture, which a lot of people do. You need to get some toothpaste. Now this is denture toothpaste. Any toothpaste will work as long as it's paste. It can't be gel gotta be paste. Um, so what you do is you take this and you spread it on your denture or wherever you think that, that that sore spot is. If you've got one over here, then just put it in that area. You don't have to put it over the whole denture. But you want to spread it on your denture like this. Like that. Just spread it around. What you want to do is you want to use a brush, toothbrush, and you want to brush it all in the same direction because this way it's all uniform and it can be sloppy. It's okay as long as it's covering the surface. So when you're done with it, let it sit for about a minute. Let it get a little bit tacky, air dry, because that way it's not super wet and it won't smear easily. And what you want to do is this is like PIP, which is what dentists use. It's an, um, an indication paste. It helps them find the pressure spots. So you want to put it in your mouth, put it up there, bite down a little bit hard, not too hard, but enough to get a good indentation of where your pressure point is. And when you're done, it's going to come out. I should have done this before, but I didn't. I'll just stick it on here real quick. So you just want to make sure that you've got a good coating on the denture so that you can see where the pressure point indents on there. So as you can tell, I don't know if you can tell with this light, <laughs> um, when, you're, when your gums hit it, it's gonna leave a little indentation mark like this. So your gums are gonna hit it and that's exactly where you know to sand. So I got this great little sander on Amazon. It was $20, it's a variable speed, which means that it turns on and you can adjust it. It's awesome. And it came with a whole bunch of different adapters, which was really cool. I don't really use all of them unless I'm using them on my nails, but for the ones for my teeth, they're specifically for teeth. I don't, I don't use them on anything else, just teeth. This is the lightest sanding grit that came with it, which is super light. So what you do when you know where your little spot is, right there, Hopefully it focuses in. Anyway, you want to make sure you hold your denture hot, tight and you hold your drill tight. Practice with this first before you take it to your teeth. Make sure that you have a soft surface below your working station. So if they do fly out of your hand, which has happened to me, this thing has flown this thing out of my hand. So just make sure that you've got a soft area that they're not going to fall and shatter somewhere. But hold it tight and then you can go in there and you can just sand away. Less is more, little adjustments at a time. But you can go in there, do your little sanding in that one little spot. Now, you can do this over and over and over again until you get it right. You don't, you, you can't really, you know, there's no limit on how much you can do it. The only limit is, is how much you sand away. You don't want to do too much. So little adjustments at a time, little tiny ones, not too much pressure. Make sure that you're, you know, that it's light pressure. Wash them, scrub them, brush them, clean them, rinse them off, dry them. And when you're done drying them and you think that you've got the right 
the right combination on there. This is my bottoms. Take this, get one of these little sanding blocks. It's for nail buffering. It's a nail buffer and they're foam and they're really flexible. So get a light grit one that's really, really light. So get in there and just lightly buff it a little bit. It'll make sure there's no sharp edges in there. There's no crazy anything. It'll just, it's really good at just getting the little, you know, sanding and buffing the, the uh, surface off. So what's great about these two is that if you're using something like Reline It or Denture Fit or whatever, you have to peel those things out and it does leave a little bit of debris. So these things are great at getting out that little debris and the little nooks and crannies, making sure it's super clean. So once you're done with this, again, you wanna make sure that you wash it, brush it, rinse it off, and then you can start fresh. So it's great at getting all the little debris, you know, cause sometimes that stuff sticks to your dentures in weird places and you know, you've got little, little funky stuff on there that sticks. So the sanding blocks are great, they're a dollar. You can get them at Target, Walmart, nail shops. I mean, they're all over the place. So they're awesome. Um, pick up a couple of them because they're really, really handy. So anyway, you can use any kind of toothpaste. It doesn't matter as long as it's paste. And the trick is to let it dry for at least a minute so it gets a little bit hard. Um, not too hard, but you want it to be hard enough to where it's not going to smear the minute you put it in your mouth. And you can do this as much as you want till you get it right, but it's a great way to find out where your sore spots are, your pressure points, and know exactly where to sand. Now, if you wanna start off with just a nail file, you can get different grits of them. Try that first. Go ahead and give it a shot. You can't do a lot of damage with a nail file unless you go like totally crazy with it. So I, I have a ton of these all over the place and they're different, they're different grits, so they work awesome. You can use these on the edges. They're really, really great. Don't take them to your teeth, just don't. But they're great for getting on the inside and then just take that buffer to it. These little nail files are amazing. You'd be surprised at how much they can do at just making small minor adjustments. So anyway, you wanna make sure that you put the toothpaste in one direction again, because that's, that's what keeps it uniform, and when you make the indentation, you're gonna know where that void is. So, anyway, I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope this helps somebody out. My fiance just got all of his teeth pulled, and he's two and a half weeks out, so we've been doing a lot of um, adjustments on the road, and this has really helped him out a lot. Uh, he did do mail order, which they turned out perfect. The bite is perfect, everything's perfect. He's just going through the healing process. So we've had to do some minor adjustments while we're out, um, out of town. And this has been an excellent method to be able to do it. He is using polygrip powder and the reline it and it's worked fantastic. So just um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please use the comments section. If you guys wanna know where I got this little file, I'll be happy to post that for you. Um, if you're gonna buy one of those, make sure you get one that has an AC adapter. Also make sure that you check the reviews on them. Uh, some of them are not so good. Make sure that it's got pretty good reviews on it and comes with some adapters. Uh, most of them, you can buy the bits and stuff at like a nail store or whatever, a beauty store, but it's great when they come with their own because you don't have to go out and buy them. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. It's really good to be back and I'm sure I will be back really, really soon. So bye guys.